So I saw the the two, the mas divine masculine and divine feminine that are normally halves of the body intermixed like sand. And so wow. the message was there isn't, it's unity consciousness now. There isn't one or the other. Right. So kind of in the same way that my, that sometime later, um, all of my chakras became the codified field as opposed to individual chakras or even a system. So um, these, it feels like, but when I work with my clients, everybody else still has their chakras and I can feel their chakras in my form as I'm working with them because I still need to be able to, to work with them. And I can still form up a chakra if I need to like go into my heart space, I can turn my whole body green or I can form up that chakra because you get information that way, um, depending on where certain energy is in the chakra itself, that helps to, for the communication. Um, but in my natural state, it's everything always everywhere. And it's the same with the, the feminine and masculine. There is no half anymore. Wow, that's so interesting that you say that because after that I got um, the, the knowing that we no longer need our chakra centers the way that we have traditionally dealt with them. Lower red, blah, 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 blah. They all turned bright white and gold. So it was like diamond white gold, plasma white gold, source light. And then when I saw, I did with a friend who's over in Germany, right? I was guided to, to facilitate a download of this new Christ of consciousness with her. And her chakra center appeared with like the major ones all in gold orbs. And then with like gentle gold threads going out with smaller orbs. I was like, this is a new chakra system I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's, and we, we touched on this a little bit last time. They are changing and they're changing differently for different people, depending on who and what you are and your mission is my sense. Mm. Um, okay. For me, um, uh, almost a year ago, exactly, my crown chakra changed completely into this other thing. Um, and then I think before that, my sacral, when I was working with Amy, changed into rose quartz from orange. Wow. Um, my energy body about six months ago turned into rose quartz. Um, in fact, when I changed my name, I'm pretty sure my first name will be Rose. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um so there's a lot that's shifting and so really we just need to um it would be helpful to open our awareness to the openness that it can be completely different and so now when i set my energy i drop from mama Gaia into the earth star chakra and then drop mama Gaia energy up into the body down pop a soul to soul star chakra and then the soul star and earth star um shoot out light like down and up and they meet in a like a white light container like two poppies that are put together um and then the papa's uh, soul energy comes down into the angelic consciousness chakra which i still do have separate um, and then down into the top of my form and so mama gaia comes up all through papa guy comes down through the center and then out like that wow. and then my whole i rotate my whole form yeah it's something um beginning in complete black i rotate my whole form through all of the colors the whole the whole spectrum rotates through the whole my whole body until it goes to white and then into silver and then into platinum and then into gold wow mm -hmm. that's so cool yeah it's wonderful and um suits me it's perfect for me um and that's just where I am now. Oh, and then I um, ignite the uh, Metatron's cube that is always there. I just wasn't aware of it. In the last last week's session, somebody mentioned something about Metatron. And it was the second yeah. time um, recently that someone had done it. And I remember going, oh, yeah, sorry, I was going to work with Metatron. I should call him in. And he's like, I'm already here. Like, <laughs> there. I remember. Yeah. So I pulled out my Angel Oracle deck pulled out the little book and opened it to Metatron. So there's the validation, the confirmation that I needed. Um, and then just, it, I said, oh, oh, I should call in the cube. And he's like, it's already there. 
if we already have one, all of us already have one. So then within my poppy container, um, I have the cube and I just acknowledge it, ignite it, and it goes, starts doing That's thing. so interesting. I had a direct initiation with Metatron and he, he downloaded a gold Metatronic cube into my body. Mm -hmm. And then later on, a like a, a, a diamond white kite shape here and then a diamond at the bottom. And when you bring them together and they spin in opposite directions, it opens up a vortex. So when we're doing transmutation, it's a vortex that goes d d directly up through, I think, 15D. Anyway, I'm like, man, it's so cool how all this is happening. Like so, three, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. And then I see myself. So like three months ago, these new um, energies that were coming in and they were 5D earth energies and they were in pastels and the texture and the quality of them was very, very, very different. So it's, it's just exciting. I'm excited. Yeah. I love it. And we get to be like on the front lines of it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you said that about the kite here, because what happened at that same time um, when I was having a conversation with um, Metatron is he also put a, a gyroscope here, a golden gyroscope. And so there's this golden white orb at the middle and seven of the circles that were going around. And I don't really know what that is yet or what it's for, but that was put right here. Wow. So your kite, what do you use your kite for? Well, I, at first, when, when he first loaded it, I, I was like, oh, it's to augment my pineal. And that was only part of it. Then later on, it was almost like my pineal had to get used to it. Then later on gave me this diamond below the second and third chakras. Mm -hmm. And we were doing a mission. We were on a mission. We were doing mission work. And I saw them come together in my light body. And I'm like, wow, I didn't know they could do that. And then this giant vortex opened up. So mm -hmm. it was technology ultimately. Mm -hmm. In and of itself, I, I don't know what the kite would do, but your gyroscope is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to play that with that more. Um, yeah, it's still there. Woo! Oh, that amps up the energy. It's like a boost. I just felt that when you did that, by the way. <laughs> it just is like, it's like a swirling orb. Is it swir It's very... Um, like one of those prison uh globes where there's something inside of it moving turning it's like in the very center is a non-distinct gold white glowing orb and then around it literally looks like the gold bands of a gyroscope and they're all turning and so i can still it there it's still but it doesn't feel good to have it still it feels like when you have two magnets at the, at the same pole and you're like trying not to I'm trying to make them touch. It feels like that. Mm -hmm. So if I allow it to go now, then it just like opens up and amplifies the energy in a really big way. Yeah, oh. that's it was so interesting. Just the the toroid, our our you know channel being the pole, and then our toroidal field that is the top of the toroid. I've seen this as well, mm -hmm. and asked you know what is this, and I was kind of shown like how the toroid needs to continually flow this energy. And this is the point where it does that. Mm -hmm. And so, and so it has a very like intense center because it is like a, a very strong vortex point. Yes. For then the energies to split and go back down to Gaia and up through our root and back up yes. through the channel and vice versa, because the flow is happening in both directions at the same time as what I was shown. Mm. Is it's that interesting? Yeah, it's interesting. There's a couple things. So um, a while back, maybe a year ago or so, my toroidal field, instead of going like this, it goes like this and out, kind of like a balls spiral. Of it's spinning yeah. too. Yeah, those things of yarn. Yeah, so it's spinning and then out and around yeah. like that also. And going out. And then, you know, we have, everybody has the heart, a smaller one for the heart. Everybody has that. Um, but then I started having all of these other chakras opening all around my head. There was a bunch of them. And um, 
And so there came a point where the, it, it felt like there was um, enough energy from so many of these that I got my another toroidal field, a smaller one just here, and I could very clearly feel this, this way. in particular, wow. smaller one just for the head. Mm. Yeah, it, 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 in, in the same path, up through the center, out and around, and then up through mm. the center again, out and around. Yeah. It's interesting. When you, when you said that um, it augments my energy, mm -hmm. I got a body hit on that. Mm. But I, so it is doing that, but I also, I, <coughs> okay, here's something else that I got. You can use this, not by itself. I'm sorry, my body, when I get body hits, they just go. It's okay. like, <laughs> I don't have to worry about getting Parkinson's. Um, <laughs> It's already happening. Um, if you use that in conjunction with, or just play with it a little more, you'll be able to open up portals. It's a, it, it will open up portals. Mm. So this will provide for even more multi interdimensional travel. Interesting. So for like um, astral travel? Or for... Um, Okay, what's the highest density that you're aware of that you're connected to? If you were to give it a number, as an example, just um, hypothetically. Energy bodies, I know I make it to the 13th. Okay, so if you're at the 13th, it would allow you to go up to the 15th. Mm. So, okay, a, a higher dimensional access point. <laughs> so here's the super interesting thing with that. Um, I'm working with, I don't know if you all know Krista Marie Miller. She channels Mary Magdalene. She's an incredible um, intuitive and all of that, and, and one of my best friends. She channels mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene, and we're writing a book right now on her life with spirit and also the teachings of Mary Magdalene, um, in part from the book of Magdalene, but also in large part from what Magdalene has directly taught Krista and Yeshua and others as well. And... Um, so we're teaching in through the book, the first 12 energy bodies. And so I was describing the codified field to Krista and she said, that's the 13th energy body. That's why I said- Oh, I just got a body hit on that one. Yeah, you did. So she feels like her mission is to teach the first 12. Mine is to do 13 through 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So That's very Krista cool. Marie, Krista Marie Miller. Yeah, you can go to KristaMarieMiller.com. She is phenomenal. She's in mm -hmm. Egypt right now, actually, um, looking at going in on a retreat center in Luxor. Oh wow! Yeah, she already helps Kathleen McGowan, who's the leading researcher on Magdalene, um, with retreats, with uh, tours in France and tours that she they just did a tour in New Orleans. Um, so yeah, she's, it's going to be big time. And just as, a, as an intuitive, as a reader, she's unbelievable. What, how do you spell her last name? M-I-L-L-E-R. C-R-I-S-T-A. Oh, no H. Yeah, Miller. no, C-R. L-L-E-R. M-I-L-L-E-R, yeah. Marie is just M-A-R-I-E. Got it. Mm -hmm. I really feel this is the key to so much understanding that that this information about what Mary Magdalene was teaching and that it was energy work and that the Christ did body is the light body initiation into the, into the higher frequencies mm -hmm. that we hold because we are all light beings. And right. that was Christ's message as well. And that I, they were on the same, they were teaching the same work right. to prep us for this time to right. get us ready for now. Right. And it, it, I love that. I, I have a woman on Kauai who also goes to, you know, does tours in France and has been trying to, um, she had a woman channel, um, Mary Magdalene, who wrote a book also, it's not a big book, but it's um, channelings where Mary spoke to her and said, these are the teachings for humanity to know mm -hmm. that our, what our work was based on and how important the love frequency is for the energy body to open and right. why we must get into our hearts and 
be able to live through the heart so that the rest of the energy body can be released. Right. Right. One of the, so of course we know, we know that Yeshua and Magdalene were equals teaching equally near in sacred partnership. Um, part of the teachings that we're bringing forward are the four pillars. She teaches four pillars, safety, security, honor, and trust. And so in this first book, we go into what that means within you. You have to have those things in place within you to truly love yourself um, before you can enter the sacred partnership. And so how do you do that? What does that mean? What does that look like? Um, and that's part of the unity consciousness, which is Christ consciousness. Mm, that makes so much sense. What was the first one? Uh, safety, security, honor, trust. Or trust. Safety, security, honor, and trust. Yeah. Which is interesting because in my own romantic relationship, our four pillars that just came through me are trust, respect, cherish, love. Love is the last one. That's the easy part. Trust, respect, cherish. And so mm. you have to have those in place within you before you can get into my energy. Yeah. That's beautiful. <gasps> that is really, really beautiful. I'm, I'm curious with Krista's work, how long have you been working with her? And was it a one-on-one -on -one or just, if you wanna yes. talk about that? So I've only known her two, two and a half, maybe years. We met through Radiance Magazine. Do you know Radiance? Yes. Yeah. So I was executive editor on Radiance Magazine um, for for two, two and a half years. That's how I met Krista. She was an associate editor. And uh, Scott said, Krista, you have to do a reading for Gina because then she'll get it. She'll understand. So I was still on the fence of like all this woo woo stuff, you know? I was doing emotion code, but that's it's quantum. It's not very woo woo unless you want it to be. And so, huh, Cynthia? Oh, I met, I now, okay, now I met her. Oh, redhead. She lives in Banning or whatever. Or yeah, uh -huh. I did. I met her at San at Sandy Chastine's house. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now I know who you're talking about. Okay. So there were a lot of people there. So. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I had a reading with her, and that reading was so spot on, uh, specific, deep. That that's what finally made me realize, okay, this isn't just a bunch of hogwash and snake oil salesmen and people, you know, because we've all had those readings. Oh, you're going to travel in this coming year and you're going to meet someone. But, <laughs> right, that karma that's affecting you now. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so she's what really helped me get firmly on this path. And then uh, we've just been working together and then becoming better and better friends. And now we, you know, don't even have to talk half the time. We just know what the other one's thinking and all of that. That's so awesome. This is, this is the time when people are coming together and they know it. They know that they're on mission, that they're fulfilling it, that they're supposed to be doing what they're doing. Right. Girl, these are biblical times. Like, like they say, these times are biblical and they really are. It's so cool to be part of it. It is. Yeah. That's exciting. That's Good for you guys. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing Thank all you. of that. And I I have another question. It would be really interesting just to hear what each of you think of um how and maybe Krista has ideas about this too. And where do you see it being available for in a non-religious way, in a non, in a non, you know, already aligned to a specific church mm -hmm. for this myth of Jesus to be debunked so that now we may be able to embrace a new story, which is that Jesus and Mary were on a heart mission and there was different work and they were together to co-create what they were doing. How, do each of you maybe see that just posing that idea and how it could start to be um, 
just to come out in the world for people to discuss it because i mean it feels pretty taboo to even say that in many circles whether you're religious or not to say oh jesus was married or they had children or mary also was a priestess and had her own ministry so how i mean it's just it feels like what a big jump and how do we possibly be talking with this idea of the marriage between the divine masculine divine feminine just maybe just that in general whoever maybe you're doing it already in your own work so and i'll say i'll say this i think perspectives are changing and as the light comes through it's opening up people and i feel like this new wave that's coming through, those who are ready to receive it will receive it. And it includes the balance, right? And those who are not ready, it's just going to go right through. So it takes generations to change dogma, right? From the outside in, but changing um, notions from the inside out goes a little bit quicker. The other thing that I'm going to say is because so, so much truth is coming out where there's a dichotomy between what science is showing and what's being taught, like the, the history, archaeology is showing something different. This, this uh, cognitive dissonance between the two is, gonna, is going to catch up in every way, which will include religious texts. So I think part of the, the collective for humanity opening up to new ideas, everybody's doing their part. Even us having this, this conversation is, is doing a, a bit of a part of that into the collective. Yeah. Interesting points. I, so I agree about the, you said of, um, something about going, changing from within as opposed mm -hmm. to us trying to give our ideas to other people, which we should, we should still be speaking our truth and, and putting it out there so that those who are able to hear, those who are able to listen can hear. Um, mm, yeah. But we're in this powerful time of introspection. COVID was a big part of that. Um, but also we have so many more tools and opportunities now to um, go within and understand ourselves better where for so long um, feelings were ignored and denied um, people were pushed into living one way or another and that's all the only options available um, people were not allowed to be in touch with their own feelings and now we can and we can gain deeper understanding into ourselves it's not just for the elite or the philosophers or the academics and so as more and more people are opening up to that and coming into a better understanding of themselves and love for themselves, then they'll have higher expectations for what they allow in their lives as far as the relationships of all types. And so as people experience a deeper, more heart-centered relationship with themselves, they'll experience deeper, more heart-centered relationships with others because that's all that will resonate with them now. Mm -hmm. And then I feel they'll be more open to accepting that Jesus and Mary Magdalene were married and in partnership. That will come through their own understanding of themselves and their partnerships. Mm -hmm. If it's meant for them to come. And there's also the reality that we're all on different journeys and some of these truths may not be um, people may not be ready for them. Not everyone will awaken at the same time. We can't have everybody awake at the same time. It's got to be a gradual stage by stage process. And so as long as the information is out there and the knowing is out there and the opportunity to access it is out there, um, it will enter into the consciousness of those who are ready at the time that is appropriate and best for them. Beautiful. Thank yeah. You. Oh, and then you mentioned you made a good point about science. I feel like the more one understands science, especially uh, quantum physics and um, uh, anatomy, biology, the closer you feel, the, the more obvious it is that there is higher power. Mm -hmm. And um, to what extent is that higher power 
um, active in our lives, that's up for different people's you know experiences and perspectives. But um, I feel like science has powerful potential to draw people closer to themselves and um, whatever that they want to call their higher power. And I, the next layer is, it's it seems appropriate and obvious to me that source, spirit, whatever you want to call it, would come to different cultures and peoples at different times in the form that's appropriate for that culture. So because it's a different name or a different mm -hmm. gender or whatever, um, doesn't mean it's a different God. It just means it's a different understanding of the same God. Even, you know, in Hinduism, they say they have thousands of gods or tens of thousands, or whatever. Really, they there's one God source power. These are just different ways to understand the different aspects and connect to the different aspect that one needs at that time. Um, yeah. But of course, we get all wound up in division. And I've gone on my soapbox before about polarity versus division. Um, so we can decide is that division or is that polarity? Is it necessary? And, and that truly is each individual being aware and conscious enough to see the workings of that in their own lives and come to that place where they're neutrally in it, in the middle and knowing that I am presence, the I am presence. Right. Right, and having the the free will to choose. Um, I kind of spat this out there. It wasn't last week that I was here. I wasn't here, but the week before. Um, just kind of like tucked it in amongst a bunch, a bunch of other things. So I'll pull it out more now. Um, there is a lot that was necessary in the 3D world that may not be necessary now as we're moving into 5D. For me, I don't really feel called to like work spells, like put herbs in jars and things like that. Um, I mean, number one, I'm too lazy. That's crafting, and I don't, I don't have time to energy or storage for that. But what? Gina's like, putting this in a Ziploc is not crafting. Right. It's yeah. when it involves a jar. I don't have a storage space to do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's the jar that makes it, not what's inside. Right. <laughs> um, but for some people that's really important and and that's um the part of their experience and it's it's really valuable and important for them for me that feels more 3d having those tangible things because it does give you a place to put your your intention and focus and like and the process of it is really what's important um i don't feel like i need that so my choice is is this 3d or 5d to me for me it feels old world so now do I choose? I get to choose. Do I bring this into my current experience or do I recognize, no, that's not for me. Um, and so I don't need to worry about that. I can let other people have their beautiful experiences and, and do what's right for them. So then it, it, with, with awareness comes free will and the awareness of duality versus polarity and which one do I feed, 3D, 5D, and which one do I feed? Um, mm -hmm. It are beautiful. two simple and powerful ways to help guide and shape your experience this is so this is so important um and i know that you you're both our energy workers and i just be curious to know um how you both do that as a as a career or how just how it is in your life in your lives cynthia i'm curious to hear i don't know how you do you see clients no i so my story. I was fast tracked. I was fast tracked on this whole thing. And my life was uh, arranged in such a way that I would take early retirement. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I don't see clients, although I've been thinking that maybe, okay, so I was thinking about 2023. And I, and I thought, well, I could, because I could use the extra money or whatever. And I might, but right now I'm, I'm, I'm helping a couple of other light workers. My, my background, I was a corporate executive and I have an extensive background in marketing as an example. I'm gonna help these gals because they don't and they need it. And so after that, maybe, maybe I'll take a look at my own thing, we'll see. But I'm right now, I'm supporting light workers in, in really important ways. Like, this is what I've learned. 
What I've learned is that there is such a thing as an ancient soul and an old soul. And um, there's one woman that, that I meet with twice a week, not Amy, who is an ancient soul. And the amount of Akashic record work that we've had to do, the amount of darkness I've, we've had to, to transmute from her, just the amount of suffering this was it, like, I'm like, this was a good life for you. You got a break. But these are very powerful beings that need help from others to get yeah. cleared so that their work can be even greater. So I'm working with a couple of people that way. That's my seva, my service or whatever. So that's my story. Mm -hmm. it and feels so like you, for you, you can read and get into the Akashic realm. You, you're connected with. Yeah, yeah, that just came on a, a, a couple of months ago. I remember Gina was on the call because I referred to the Akash incorrectly and I still don't know the difference. All that I know is I'm connected to a 15D version of Metatron. So when I go to the Akashic, I go to him because we don't have to stop at a librarian or anything. We just go in and grab whatever we want. And we can do up to three people. I've done like three people, four people at a time looking for the intersect so we can do multiple clearings at once so yeah mm. beautiful it feels like people will if you're meant to do to have clients and data um people will show up and ask can you do sessions for me mm -hmm. or they'll come up and ask do you ever work with clients i'd love to work with you yeah, works. right. Right now, I'm only supporting other light workers, but I do it almost every day, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it feels. So like is that what happened to you in your personal experience? So my personal experience, um, that I was always a seeker. I made up my own little religion in middle school because I was dissatisfied with the <laughs> available options. <laughs> um, middle school rebel. That's your next book. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. And so I had a health crisis. I had fibromyalgia and migraines my whole life. And it got to the point where I was um, eight migraines a month in a dark room a lot, had two young kids, couldn't go live with them, um, had to work. I was a writer writing resumes and I couldn't look at a computer sc screen for very long. It hurt and I couldn't think of words, but you know, I'm a Taurus, so I power through and you know, earn the money because I had to. And, um, but I was, you know, doing all the 3D things, but nothing worked even acupuncture, diet changes, master cleanse two times, went gluten-free, dairy-free. I've been vegetarian for 26 years. Um, like everything I could think of and nothing helped. And then um, around the same time as that was coming to a crisis, I actually fought for disability, it was so bad. Um, my house, the house that I was living in, super haunted and just like getting worse and worse and worse. My kids would run screaming from rooms. They would be kept up all night because of the orbs flying around. Um, I had, I went to go sage one night. Oh. Funny stories. Yeah, I went to go sage one night and I was standing in front of a closet that was a portal. And I heard somebody, I lit the lighter and it went <sighs> and the candle- Oh my God. <laughs> it went towards me and blew out from the closet. <laughs> I was like, wow. Like, like, wow. Like, like, whoa. <laughs> whoa, I just got chills. Yeah, it was like, and and so far, the last straw. I have so many stories. But the last straw was my little toddler son saying in the middle of the night he couldn't sleep and he kept fussing around. And he goes, "I don't like the two men." I'm like what two men? He goes, "The two men, mommy. I don't like them." And I said, "Well, what's wrong?" And like thinking he saw a movie, and I was asking him like, "Do you see a movie and a TV show?" He goes, "No, they have big bad hours." He's going like this. They have big bad hours. And I said, well, "Are they going to be okay?" And he goes, "No." creepy little kid oh my god and and then i said well where are they and he points right next to the side of the bed and goes right there so all i knew at that time was to cast them out in the name of jesus and i feel really bad about that now because they were here for help but i had a friend i was learning about chakras at the time i had a friend come and clear the house uh, who was my chakra teacher and she had a, a conversation with the woman who had died in my bedroom um helped her cross over um, closed the portals, convinced the Native Americans who were walking through my bedroom to go around, um, cast out some evil entities that were being drawn in. It's this whole story. Um, but 
she told me, you're a light, you're a light, you're like a spotlight in the dark and your children are lights too. And so no matter where you go, this is gonna be a problem. So you better learn to get control of it and work with it, um, or you're gonna run from house to house, it won't matter. So um, yeah, it was, it was finally him seeing that. And then there was a night where um, I saw the spirits. I couldn't tell if he was leading them in, like he left, my younger son left the bed. Um, and when he came back in, he had light coming up in his face and he was followed by a ton of shadow people. And I can't tell if they're bringing him back or if he was leading them to me. But I was like, oh, hell no, you are not involving my kids in this. No. And I ripped myself out of the sleep uh, dream state I was in and was like, that was it. I mean, they, were, they would yell at me all night. It was a whole thing. So um, because of the health crisis, I learned emotion code. My friend was saying, you have to learn emotion code. She was having it done for her kids and having amazing results. So I had one session done and felt this immediate shift. I was 17% in my body, my spirit body, wow. 17% in. So of course, you know, depression and disconnection from life and health issues and all these things. Your whole spirit wasn't even in your body. It was your like results. that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, this is a real thing. Like big time. Yeah, I, I help people with it all the time now. So she put me back in my body. It felt so different. And then decided I have to learn how to do it for myself. And my friend wanted to learn to, to uh, herself as well. So we would learn together, practice on each other and just better and better and better. And um, had to release a ton of unworthiness and um, Christian dogmatic programming, uh, Catholic in particular, Mexican and Italian heritage. Hello, you know? No, you had no chance. <laughs> well, I had a chance because I had emotion code. Um, <laughs> and so um started practicing and clearing myself clearing her i just had my um three-year anniversary i used to have eight migraines a month three years since my last migraine oh bravo yeah thank you Good for and you the fibro it's still a tiny bit there but I mean, I go run six miles a day, a couple of times a week. Um, well, I did before the time changed that not mess things up, but um, I do Zumba, I do weightlifting. I go out and spend the whole day out hiking, you know, and it's fine. It's good. So, um, and then as I was doing emotion code, um, it was just flexing those um, Claire Senti or Claire gifts. I have all the Claire's, there's six of them. Um, so I'm just like in the gym, flexing my energetic muscles all day long. And so it just opened up more and more and more. And then meeting all these amazing people, learning from them and opening up more and more. Amy helped me open up a ton. Um, Sandy, I do sessions for Sandy weekly. And That's what she said. She pushes me. I've, there's been a lot, we got attacked by Dracos one time. Like, it, there's just so much that happens. So yeah, that's I was working with Sandy fairly regularly, and I and I backed off of that. I was just taken in a different direction. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, and I loved it. And it's really, um, I I learned more about my the origin of my mission. Like there's just so much. So um, so now I see to your original point, Vicky, or question. I mostly just see clients. Um, I'm a writer as well, so I'm working on that book with Krista. Um, my own book as well. I do content creation for other people. Um, I used to work with Radiance Magazine a whole lot, um, but mostly I, I do Zoom calls with clients all day long. And um, so we release trapped emotional baggage, um, open things up, have deep conversations. I give them tools uh, to use in between sessions. So most of my people use come weekly. Do you use the emotion codes with them? or is it different? it's it's so the emotion code was like it's like five percent of what i do now i still have my i use my chart my handy emotion code chart um as a jumping off point but i call it now restorative ascension because my understanding is we have our authentic selves and we have all of these layers of trauma programming paradigms all this stuff on top from this life other lives and other dimensions and so we clear these things away through the emotion code but like the expanded emotion code to restore one to their authentic self for the purpose of their soul evolution and their evolution of their experience in this life. So I do the muscle testing and get trapped emotions, but in the original emotion code teaching, they say four to six um, uh, emotions per session, no more than 10. You find one emotion, one age, release it, and then you have to go back and fill in with Reiki energy. 
I find compounds because we we experience many emotions at one time, sometimes two or three, sometimes five or 15, um, all going at the same time, they're all bound up together. And then we tri trap and trigger them, we experience them and trap them again, over and over and over again, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, hundreds of millions, billions of times over the course of a lifetime. So I check for this current incarnation related timelines. Um, all um, other dimensional realities based on this current incarnation and those related timelines. And then we go into previous lives, not past lives, previous lives, lives that before this one, which could be at any point along the linear timeline that we know now, which is just a construct. So all previous lives, all of their dimensional realities and their timelines. And so, and then I don't release it because that creates a void or a vortex or a, a gap. We don't want that. So I transmute all of the atoms in, in those compounds, which are now in the hundreds of millions and billions now, sometimes tens of billions in a single compound into the frequency of love. So the atoms that make up the physical and energetic body and the arc field of the person across all space, time and dimension is now being raised by that amount, right? So um, the effects are rapid and um, depending on the depth of work that needs to be done and the amount of intuitive awareness the person has sometimes they can feel it a ton and it's you know totally visceral visceral and, and happens uh, right away the results sometimes it takes a bit to there's a lot to clear away and then they start seeing the uptick but i've had people who've had like physical issues like a, a lady had her issues with her quads in one leg and she's had it for years and it wouldn't go away and it was really hampering her ability to be the athlete she wanted to be and so one session cleared it up. It hasn't been an issue. And she's like, I keep pushing myself harder and like trying to like push it to its max. And I can't, it, it's fine. I can't get it to spasm again. It's healthy now. What emotion was wow. that related and to it, or what compound? Past life. So this was, um, and I don't even, I think we're working in the energy body. So there's the physical body and then there's the energy body, in, which is the energy blueprint of the physical body. I think with her, we were in the energy body of the four muscles of the quadriceps system, I think, or just in the thigh in general. And I don't remember what, what those compounds were that needed to be released from that. Um, oh, that's right. We worked in the thigh chakra. So there's a, there's a thigh chakra. There's one of the feet, ankles, calves, knees, thighs. Um, and I discovered those because I was having issues with my knees. Nothing was making go away. Oh, there's a knee chakra there. Clear it out. All better. Meniscus, fine. Same with the calves. Um, cramping in the calf, all the physical stuff, nothing helped. Supplements didn't help. Massage didn't help. Stretching, nothing. There's a calf chakra. Oh, clear it out. Gone. So we did that with her thighs, thigh chakra. And the thigh chakra is about um, granting access, claiming the power to grant access to your inner self wow Has access to your inner self been forced have you been giving it away for various reasons um the relationship with with that and that's a big part of um, standing in your power is who who do i allow access to and healing times in which it was taken and forced that's one example so, so wow so Gina, then you're saying that that this is all doable for uh, for emotions and things and chakras where it have been storing this energy from previous lifetimes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially lately, there's been this huge explosion since right before the last equinox, like lead the week or two leading up to that. It went from being able to find compounds of millions and then tens and hundreds of millions to hundreds of millions and billions like i rarely get anything under several hundred million in one little segment and then it adds up to several billion or more so, so really that's the science because that's quant that's that quantum fractalization that mm. it's all mirrors upon mirrors upon mirrors right in quantum physics with that right and to infinity right but because of that area the, the most amazing thing, though, is that it's available to you because you can access those other dimensions. Mm -hmm. And the clearing is happening because you're going like through the records back to that. That instance, that lifetime where the, whatever happened to create that holding. Mm -hmm. And time space isn't a, a, 
it doesn't matter. It's not real because you're going into the quantum space of it. Right. And clearing it. Right. Yeah. And this and is possible. It, it's totally, yeah. And I, I work with my clients by going to, I have a healing space in the quantum realm. It's also where my Akashic records are. And I bring them into the healing space there and their entire team and spirit. And then my team and spirit that works together with me in healing. So that's how we're able to do this remotely. And it's easy, it's, it's intention. And as we know, there are, there's a very famous experiment um, using what quantum, the protons, when someone was observing it, that happened one way, when nobody was observing it, it did something else. So it's just intention. Um, and it's, it can be hard for people to, to accept that it's really as simple as that. Um, and so when I'm releasing these compounds, I get a number for current incarnation related timelines. And then I say, in how many other lives is this also being trapped and triggered? And I'll muscle test until I get a number in 13 other dimensions. Okay, across how, all those 13 dimensions. So I get a, a number for how many times it's trapped and triggered there. And then say, how many past lives? Mm, 28. Okay. And then get the total number for that. So I can hit all of them. Sometimes we'll go specifically into a specific past life and really release whatever is in there and sometimes not. And then sometimes like today, several times, um, I could see very clearly a shore in Scotland and describe it clearly and um, describe what the person looked like in that life. And then ask, you know, have, did you ever feel any pull to Scotland? She was like, well, yeah, after I got out of the Peace Corps, I went to Scotland. I spent six months there. It felt like home to me. I wanted to stay. I, I tried to stay, but it didn't work out. Um, she actually changed her last name to um, reference a town in Scotland. So, yeah. So it's all accessible. And like that was just one little sliver of the entire picture we, we was, were able to release. Quick and easy with running the energy and using a light language um, term that was given. It's quantum That's, healing now. Mm hmm Right. Right. Yeah. Because this physical form is just, um, it's such a tiny, tiny percentage yeah. of what we actually are. We are. And what do you call that, what you do? Does it have Restore, a name? Yeah, I call it now restorative ascension. Because we restore you back to your authentic self for the purpose of ascension. The ascension of your soul across the, the entirety of your experience, but also the ascension of your experience in this current information. This is just truly amazingly powerful and wonderful. And I'm so glad that <laughs> I'm so glad it was a small call today and I got to meet you both and know so much more about you. And 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 that this is all really possible, that you're that you have these gifts that you're helping people with, especially for the light workers. Yeah. And I wanna say, you know, yeah, for the light workers. And Cynthia, what you described before about the very old souls and the and the persecution is something I'm dealing with and haven't found anyone to help me clear a, re, a I know some a bunch of old stuff that happened it, it's still in me and I cannot the work that I've done or who I've been with has not been able to access it enough and so both of you I feel like would be just so helpful to me to do a session with um if you somehow want to leave your info I don't know if you could put it in the chat just that go ahead amazing. and messenger if we're both we're we're oh, both yeah. on JNS tours or whatever. Just yeah. message me and we'll set something up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. I feel like that was we were on a really good panel. Like that was the purpose of today. It was just to Well, yeah. and honestly, so when I think about because it was it was just less than a year ago that I was on my first call. And the intention of the calls I thought was to do was to work was to work or learn or mentor and it didn't really quite flesh out that way mm -hmm. but I really love people sharing their experiences and their expertise and how because everything I do is just guided like I did I, some so much of the things that I've been through or, or done I don't find out until months later what it meant I'm mm -hmm. like I, Oh, I literally had a moment after my light body was activated, not a moment. I literally turned myself over to live in surrender. I so completely understood that this was my last lifetime. I was on mission. This is it. And um, since I turned myself over, literally every time I go in, I'll, you know, 
I'm like, what am I here to do today? How can I be of assistance? What can I do? So it's interesting. You're in a different where you're directing everything, right? Because mm-hmm. you have all of the all of the knowledge about the uh, the emotion code, et cetera, et cetera. But even then, that's changing for you. Yeah. That, and how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Somebody, somebody says, I have this issue. Can you help? I'm like, I don't know. Let's see. And then we yeah, do. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's interesting. Then, do you both feel that this being able to access more dimensions and in, in this way that you both are able to do that, that it actually maybe is something that more humans can do? that this is one of our, one of the gifts we actually have once there's a, a certain amount of clearing, emotional clearing, understanding. Cognitive. I would say absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I think <clears throat> um, some of us, it's like some of us are better in math than others. And some of us are better in reading or writing than others. Um, some of us have stronger gifts because of our mission that we're on for this incarnation but everybody has intuitive gifts and everybody has the potential to expand on what they've been given so like i wasn't born very good at math um but over time outside of school um got better on my own um anybody can do that with their intuitive gifts and for me my the two groups of people i work with are the brand new people waking up and they don't know what to do with it um, and then people like us who are doing the big work and like Sandy and, and all that, and who need the support. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's really fun to be on both ends of the same spectrum. But yes, everybody is intuitive. Um, everyone is a healer. And it just depends on what they're willing and uh, agree to do. Beautiful. Yeah, it's interesting. And the more people that you work with, I, I had an experience where I was helping another light worker and I was like, oh my God, you have this like white blue being behind you. Anyway, so I tapped into it and it was her higher self from 15D. And then the next time I worked with her, there were four of them there. And I was like, wow, it's a whole family, (laughs) right? Then the next time I went to do something else, they showed up on their own. They literally gave me through her, I got access to 15D. And yet she's not, she does, she's not clairvoyant and she doesn't feel anything. Mm. And, but she has like these huge connections, but she's not even aware of them. Mm. Kind of interesting. Awesome. Yeah. And my, my one last question has to do with DNA, which probably could go into a much longer call. But how much do each of you think? this activation or what is um, accelerating the ascension has to do with something that's going on in our DNA and that the mul- our multi-dimensional abilities could maybe be residing in, the, in, in those, uh, like what was the word you used, Gina? Um, the word you use is uh, when you get the particles or the, you're looking at compounds, compounds, the mm-hmm. compounds, right? So that the DNA, maybe from what I'm reading and hearing from other channels, is that it's the multi-dimensional levels of our DNA that are that are enabling us to go where both of you are going. Yeah, I have things to say, but Cynthia got a hit. I'm dying to know what she's got. Well, uh, when you, yeah, I got a body hit when. Um... It was when you said it will allow us to access our multidimensional selves. My body, I just got a body hit on that. So Talk I'm going to say yes. <laughs> 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 well, here's been my experience. Um, so a couple things. From the restorative ascension standpoint and emotion code as well. Proteins, no, DNA is protein strands. Protein strands are atoms. Atoms vibrate. All physical matter is made of atoms. Protein strands are physical matter, atoms vibrate. So yes, and you know, there's epigenetics, which looks at, at the changes in DNA um, following trauma. So the science supports that as well. Um, and so part of what I do and can do is um, go specifically into the DNA 
and ask, is there anything in the DNA that's adversely affecting this client um, in this issue, whatever anxiety or fear or um, low self-worth or whatever it is, headaches, menstrual cycle issues, whatever. And when I get a yes, I say, okay, which ancestor is most, has um, elements in the DNA that are most adversely affecting this issue? And um, mother's side, father's side, father's side, is it his? No, mother, father, father, is it his? No, mother, father, father. Like trace it back to the originating ancestor and then get the compound, um, get all my numbers like usual. And then I can transmute it from the originating ancestor, from the client, and then from everybody in between. So all those souls, which I just love because it's the odds are good that you're incarnated with those same souls now, because that's how soul families work. And even if you're not, if they're incarnate somewhere else in on the planet, they're suddenly going to have a better day. And that's wonderful. Um, if they're preparing for their next incarnation, they're not going to be carrying it forward. So that's great. They're going to save money on emotion code sessions themselves. And, um, and it helps the client as well. And so that's that for the DNA. And then um, I personally have had activations in celestial DNA. Um, by going into the Mother Gaia crystal. Mm. So you got a body hit? <laughs> <laughs> That's part of my, my daily you know, energy setting is going down to the Mother Gaia crystal and lay on her. And then I just like flow into her and, and go into the crystal itself, into the womb. And she activates my celestial DNA, charges up. And then I take that energy up into the earth star and everything as I described before. And then, so there's that. Um, Elemental DNA got activated through Amy, especially with Amy Biondini. Um, I feel like there's another one that I'm not remembering now. But yeah, so it's definitely not just the two chains going. There, there are multiple other ones going. It's much more complex. And that there's, there are levels in how each level is kind of coded and each one is coded from what I've been reading is the Hebrew letters that actually explain each level and how the Hebrew is a code, the words, the actual Hebrew language and other ancient languages are codes to connect and turn on the layers that were shut off. Interesting. Well, that, that's so one that way. There are... You would also know how to sound it out correctly. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. I like that as a, um, an access point for some people who um, might it might not resonate with in some other way, the way it happened for me or anybody else. Yeah, I was just fascinated. It kind of came through the cryon channel and then I linked it to the light language and the work from JJ Hertok and the Future Science Group. Mm -hmm. And they're both saying the same. And it's almost the exact same Hebrew Hebrew words mm. to connect. I'll have to look into that. That's fascinating. Um, crystalline DNA was the other one that I know I have. Uh, oh, so. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crystal. Crystalline, angelic, and, and elemental. Mm -hmm. And maybe galactic. <laughs> oh, yeah, or... That's an interesting point. Yeah, I haven't. That hasn't come up yet, but I would not be surprised. I mean, but don't we all have galactic DNA? Isn't that baked mm -hmm. in? I think one of the things that makes humans really important is the fact that we are such a mixture of different intergalactic DNA. Right. So what I've learned, this I didn't read a book or whatever. This is literally what I've learned from personal experience. So there are species out in the universe who have deliberately been cut off, their upper chakras deliberately cut off, and they're controlled like in a hive mind AI thing, right? Mm, yeah. So um, what, I, what I have learned, part of some of the mission work that I, that I do is help go help these people because we have a common genetic. Like everybody's got a little bit of reptilian, a little bit of mantis, a little bit of caristos, a little bit of this. And because of that, when we reach this point where we can work with the etheric on ener energetic or spiritual bodies with others this way, we're healing so many and we're bringing light to so many. If we weren't human, if I wasn't human, I wouldn't be able to do, I'd be so limited. 
but I've I've come across species out and about in the universe that I've never even heard described in any of the stuff that we see here. But clearly they carry some common genetics too. And the nice thing about this is that it makes you realize how we really are all connected, not just spiritually, but even in terms of our makeup, you know, a lot more in common than separates us. Fascinating point. Yeah, so true. That was a big aha moment for me was opening the perspective to galactic beings and being able to, or, or having had incarnated on other planets. Of course we have. Because if all souls, if all if all souls come from source, then and there are intelligent, sentient beings out there. That, because of course there are. They would need souls too. Where would their souls come from? Source. So, obviously, you know. Yeah. It, it is a point about it's the genetics. To imagine it's, it's all by choice, maybe. Mm -hmm. If it really is free will. You know, do all beings have the free will that humans have? And where are we allowed to take that? Yeah. And, and those that don't know, they can be controlled. There's so much computers. violation of free will out in the universe. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable to me. I've, I've come across so many, so many. Mm -hmm. And not just, not just human-like species either. So that's slavery and, and not honoring free will is a, is a problem in the universe, actually. And some beings don't have free will, like angels don't have free will to intervene in our lives. So we have to ask right. them specifically. Right. So it is a gift. Um, and emotions, the way we experience emotions, that's something, I don't know that it's unique to Earth, but it's certainly not the norm. It is not. And it's part of what makes us that much more powerful. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I, um, and how are we on time? I think our time is just about. Just about, we should probably wrap up soon. I've got to hop off here soon. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I have an intergalactic contact, um, a member of what it would, you would call a cedar race. And uh, I work with them quite a lot. And the first time that, uh, that I was with them, working with them, part of my transmutation process requires filling myself with the violet flame. And I feel the mercy and compassion. It's a very emotional experience for me. And I, I have always considered it to be important and true. Their clearings, mm -mm. they don't have emotion around it. They, it's, and I remember feeling like, wow, I don't trust you guys. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was like, what, what is up with that? This is, they're, but they're very, very logical. They're very logical. Mm -hmm. The way that they see yeah. the world is so different. It doesn't mean that they're not loving though, but they don't, ex they don't experience emotion the way we do. And it's part of why they really love working with humans. The emotional component that we bring amplifies the effectiveness of their own technology. Mm. I wonder about the role of ego in many of these intergalactic races, because the source of many of our low frequency um, emotions is ego. Mm. Mm. I never thought about that before, but that's interesting. Well, I, for me, this uh my intergalactic contact whom i call singletree he uh he allowed me to see through his mind i was like how do you view the world and it lasted gina i could do it like i mean like not even a nanosecond and i was like let me out mm -hmm. like i would sit here staring at a desk and i would see you know some cube or or you know lines in terms of a pattern and know that it's part of a tree he would look at this desk and he would give you um mathematical formulas about the kind of tree that it was made out of the exact angle like he would see into the atomic structure of the thing as part of his vision 
And if, and I was like, oh my God, how, I mean, this would make me ill if I had to look at the world this way. I'm like, I love being able to look at things and just seeing their physical manifestation. They see, they see all at once. It's really very interesting. Wow. Oh, Cynthia, that put something totally together for me about why we sense the world through our senses. And then everything is sensual and sensed and felt and why our hearts are feeling devices is to, is to, to feel the reverence for the divine, to have the love and the connection be there in that loving way when we feel our higher angels and the power and we feel the higher realms in God. It lo they love us. They made us. And that how we can love back that this is the reverent feeling of that connection to me is I just thank you for making that moment first into clarity for me about about our senses being just so needed and so such a gift right now for this creation to the divine realms to come back into into our bodies and for us to erase the lines of all of the dogma and feel that divine just love again from our creators mm -hmm. from our from the creator that the love like thank you for making me i love this life i love everything you made and everything around me and everyone is me we're all made from the same creator like that just awareness coming from our hearts is yeah wow that was beautiful Thank you. It was like a beautiful wrap up too. Yeah, Vicky, that was perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you both. You both got me there <laughs> to that right. awareness. Well, this was really and, fun. Thank you. Yeah, for your time and yeah. I was gonna go yeah, take a break. I'm, I'm so glad I came here instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go. Gina, All right, terrific. What, what is your last name, Gina? And spell it, please, so I can message you. Sure, Kegel, K E G E L, like the exercises. Ha ah, beautiful. Great. <laughs> but that's what you do. It's like Kegel. Awesome. Yep. Spiritual Kegel. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you think of me, do a set of 10, and you're welcome. <laughs> call me in the morning <laughs> all right ladies thank you so much thank you right. thank, thank you so much Bye. thank you both Bye. Merry Christmas. happy new year happy new year happy new year